All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who is truly worthy of all praise. To Allah belongs the most beautiful names and attributes of complete perfection. And all thanks is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who is the source of all blessings. And peace and salutations upon the Messenger of Allah, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent as a mercy to all of the alameen. We were speaking last khutbah about the final hours of the life of the Prophet in this dunya. And we arrived at his last moments in this dunya. And we were talking about how the Prophet ﷺ, when he became so weak because of his illness, that he could no longer lead the Muslims in the praying. So the Prophet ordered his companions when he heard Bilal make the Adhan, he ordered them to order Abu Bakr to lead the prayer. Order Abu Bakr that he may lead the people in the prayer. And of course they said to the Prophet that Abu Bakr is a man who is weak and he will not see you on the musalla, he will not be able to lead the prayer. So the Prophet insisted, So the, so the companions, they asked Abu Bakr to lead the prayer. And for some period of time, Sayyidina Abu Bakr led the prayers. And then on Monday, when the Muslims were in their rows in the Fajr prayer, the Prophet ﷺ removed the curtain from the Hujra of Aisha where he was residing. And he looked at the Muslims standing in front of their Lord and he saw the fruits of his dawah and his jihad and that how the Ummah had now been connected to their Lord. Never had a Nabi or a Da'i before him achieved what he had achieved. The success of connecting the people to their Lord. When the companions realized the Prophet ﷺ was at his window, they found some comfort in that. And they thought that the Prophet ﷺ would come out to them. But he indicated to them to remain in their places. As some of the companions mentioned, Allah anhum, they said, Kashab al Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Satra Hijrat Aisha, Yandur ilayna. They said that the Prophet removed the curtain from the Hujra of Aisha and he looked upon us, wa huwa qa'in, and he was standing, wa ka'an nawajuhu wa rafatu mushaf. And then they saw the Prophet standing in the window and they said, Thumma tabassama wa And then the Prophet smiled and laughed. And middle of the laugh of the Prophet وسلم, that when he would laugh, his laughing was that his molar teeth would become apparent. And then they said, Fahamamna an naftatinu min al As a result of that, we became so happy. We thought that the Prophet would come out to the prayer. 
فَأَشَارَ إِلَيْنَا أَنْ أَتِمُّ صَلَاتَكُمْ We saw that the Prophet would come out to us, but the Prophet then indicated us to remain our places and to complete our prayer. وَدَخَلَ الْحُجَرَ And he went back into his room. وَأَرْفَ أَسَّتَرَ وَنْ سَرَفَ بَعْضَ الصَّحَابَ إِلَىٰ عَمَلِهِ The Prophet returned back to his place, closed the curtain, and the companions then returned back to their actions, their digital affairs. Before this they thought that the Prophet was sick, so many of them remained in the vicinity of the masjid. But when they saw this, many of them returned back to their actions. وَدَخْلَ أَبَا بَكْرٍ عَلَىٰ إِبْنَتِهِ عَائِشَ Abu Bakr was an who he entered upon Aisha and his daughter وَقَالَ and he said مَا أَرَى رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ إِلَّا قَدْ أَقْلَعَ عَنْهُ وَجَعَ I don't say except that the illness that the Prophet has had has now passed away وَهَذَا يَوْمُ بِنْتِ خَارِجَ and today is the day of his second wife the daughter of Kharaja إِحْدَى زَوْجَدَيْ one of his wives she used to live and the outskirts of Medina. So he went to his second home, thinking that the Prophet ﷺ had now become well. But the illness of the Prophet only became more severe. Usama bin Zayd radiallahu wa anabihi entered upon the Prophet ﷺ wa qad sammat. At that time, the person stopped speaking. He was unable to speak. فَجَعَلَ يَرْفَعْ يَغَيْهِ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ ثُمَّ يَضَعْهُ عَلَىٰ أُسَامَةِ Usama says that the person began to raise his fingers up to the sky and then point to Usama because he could no longer speak. And Usama says فَعَرَفَ أَنَّهُ يَدْعُوا لَهُ he knew that when the person was doing this and doing this, that he was making dua for Usama. And then Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Bakr, radiallahu anhu and abihi, came to the Prophet وسلم, to visit him. And the Prophet وسلم, was looking at the siwak that Abdul Rahman had. And Aisha radiallahu anhu and abihi, she noticed that the Prophet was looking at his siwak. Siwak is a tooth stick. Nowadays the Muslims use it also to keep one's teeth in good hygiene. When she saw this, she realized that the Prophet wanted it, so she said, Should I take it for you, a Messenger of Allah? So he indicated with his head, yes. So she took it and softened it for him. And then the Prophet made siwak, she says, And then he cleaned his teeth with his tooth stick, the best possible manner. Allah's Messenger is, is making him presentable, himself presentable before his Lord. SubhanAllah. The last moments of his life, he's preparing himself to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beloved. And whilst he's doing this, he's saying, Sir Rafiq al ala to the friend the most high. And Wakana sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yadhu yadhu fi rukwat al ma'in aw umbat al ma'in fa yamsaf biha wajhu wa yakul la ilaha illallah inna lil mawti sakarat. And Aisha radiallahu she describes that the Prophet would put his hand in a pot of water and he would wipe his face with it and he would say there is no one worthy of worship except Allah indeed is de in death there is great pain. And then the Prophet would raise his hand up and when he raised his hand up he said Firrafiq al-A'la and he would keep saying that until eventually his soul was taken and then his arm dropped. And the statement of, or in some of the left of the hadith, it mentions that the Prophet وسلم, would say a dua, he would say, Allahumma alni ala sakarat al maut. Wallah, aid me and help me with the pain of death. 
Aisha radiallahu anha narrates, and these narrations are in Bukhari. Aisha radiallahu anha narrates, she met with Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa asfat, wa asfat ilayhi, wa asfat tu ilayhi qabla in namut, wa huwa muslidun dhahru. She says that I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he was leaning, as another narration mentions, that when the Prophet became ill, she rested him against herself, between her nahar and her sihar, sihriha. And so she was leaning against him and she said that I began to listen to what the Prophet ﷺ was muttering. And he would say, Allahumma khirli warhamni, walhaqni bil rafiq al-a'la, O Allah forgive me, and have mercy on me, and join me with my companion most high. Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, when the Prophet passed away, wa karba abah, or before the Prophet passed away, wa karba abah, she was complaining about the sickness of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, faqala laha, so he said to her, laysa ala abiki karba ba'da al-yawm, there will be no illness or any difficulty upon your, upon your father after this day. فَلَمَّا مَاتَ قَالَتْ يَا أَبَتَا أَجَابَ رَبَّا دُعَاهِ O my father, Allah has answered your dua, يَا أَبَتَا جَنَّةُ الْفِرْدَوْسِ مَعْوَا O my father, جَنَّةُ الْفِرْدَوْسِ is now your abode. And then the Prophet ﷺ was buried. فَاطِمَا رَضِيَ اللَّهِ عَنْهَا She said to Anas, كَيْفَ فَابَتْ نَسُكُمْ أن تحثوا على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم التراب. How did it please your souls that you threw upon the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم the soil? سبحان الله. Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم left the dunya and he was the leader of all of جزيرة العربية. The kings of the dunya at that time feared him and his companions were prepared to give their souls and their children and their wealth for him. And while he himself not, didn't leave a dinar or a dirham, nor did he leave any slaves, no slave man, no slave woman, and nothing else except a white mule which he used to ride and his weapons and some, uh, some land which he had given in Salah. Allah's Messenger وسلم, left nothing else. Allah's Messenger وسلم, died and his armor he had pawned it to a Yahudi for 30 sa of Sha'i, 30 volumes of Bali. And this was on the on Monday the 12th of Rabi al in the 11th year of Hijrah, after the Zawar of the sun. And the Prophet was 63 years old. And as some of the companions mentioned, وَكَانَ أَشَدَّ الْأَيَامِ سَوَادًا وَوَكْحَةً وَمُصْحَابًا عَلَى الْمُسْلِمِينَ Then they say that this was the most severest and blackest and most confusing days that ever befell the Muslims. وَمِحْنَةٍ كُبْرًا لِلْبَشَرِيَةٍ And it was a great trial for all of mankind. And as رضي الله عنه says, كَانَ يَوْمُ الَّذِي قَدِمَ فِيهِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى 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 اللَّهِ The day when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم came to Medina, everything became brighter. فَلَمَّا كَانَ الْيَوْمُ الَّذِي مَاتَ فِيهِ أَظْلَمَ مِنْهَا كُلَّ شَيْءٍ and then the day when the Prophet passed away, everything became black and dark. وَبَكَتْ أُمُّ أَيْمَنْ أُمْ أَيْمَنْ She wept. She was the nursemaid of the Prophet ﷺ. And someone asked, مَا يُبْكِيكِ عَلَى النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم What does that make you cry about the Prophet ﷺ? فَقَالَتْ إِنِّي قَدْ أَلِمْتُ أَنَّ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم سَيَمُوتُ She said that indeed I knew that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم would die. وَلَكِنْ إِنَّمَا أَبْكِي عَلَى الْوَحْيِ الَّذِي رُفِعْ عَنَّا But she says that I cry now that there will be no more revelation that will come to us. 
سيدنا ابو بكر رضي الله عنه عزيز ابن رجل رجل بن رجل نبيس لما توفي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اضطرب المسلمون فمنهم من دحش فخلد ومنهم من اقضى فلم يطق القيام ومنهم من اتخذ لسانه فلم يطق الكلام ومنهم من انكر موته بالكليه ابن رجل بن رجل he says in the Ba'at al-Ma'arif that when the Prophet ﷺ passed away the Muslims became confused and there were those who amongst them whose confusion led them to almost a state of junoon and there were some amongst them who sat because they were unable to stand and there were those amongst them who were unable to speak and there were those amongst them who completely disbelieve in the process of death. Al-Qurtubi narrates describing how big a musibah, calamity that befell the Muslims. He says, Min Adam al-Masaib al-Musibah fi al-Din. He says that the greatest of all of calamities is a calamity in the religion. Father Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam إِذَا أَصَابَ أَحَدُكُمْ مُصِيبَةً فَلْيَذْكُرْ مَصَابُهُ بِي فَإِنَّهَا أَعْضَمَ الْمَصَائِبِ If any of you, if any problem befalls him, then let him remember what befell me. For verily, that was the greatest of all of the calamities. And indeed, it's true what the Prophet ﷺ Because the death of the Prophet ﷺ and his passing were meant that there was no more revelation after that. And after that, all Nubuwa has ceased, deceased. And after that, then became the first problems that became apparent. Some of the Arabs, they returned back to their former religion and left the deen. And many other problems like that. And this was the first of the good that was stopped. Sayyidina Umar al at the death of the Prophet ﷺ began to promise the people, warning them that whoever thought that the Prophet ﷺ had died, he would say to them, مَا مَاتَ وَلَكِنَّهُ ذَهَبَ إِلَى رَبِّهِ كَمَا ذَهَبَ مُوسَى بْنِ عمران. He's not died, but he's gone to his Lord, just like Musa ﷺ went to his Lord. And then he would say, فَقَدْ غَابَ عَنْ قَوْمِهِ أَرْبَعِنَ لَيْلَةٍ ثُمَّ رَجَعَ إِلِيهِ He was missing from his people for 40 days. That's Musa a.s. Was missing from his people for 40 days. Then he returned back to them. And then he would say, Wallahi la yarja'anna Rasulullah s.a.w. kama raja'a Musa. By Allah, the Prophet s.a.w. would return back to how it was just like Musa s.a.w. returned back to his people. فَلَا يَقْتَعَنَّ أَيْدِي رِجَالٍ أَوْ أَرْجُلِهِمْ فَلَا يَقْتَعَنَّ أَيْدِي رِجَالٍ أَوْ أَرْجُلِهِمْ زَعَمُ أَنَّهُ مَاتْ And he said that the Prophet when he return, will return, he will cut the hands or the feet of those people who thought that the Prophet had died. When Sayyidina Abu Bakr who heard this new news, he came upon his horse from his maskan which was in Salah, which is on the outskirts of Medina. So he came, and when he came he didn't speak to anybody. He entered into the masjid. He never spoke to anybody, even though he saw all these things that were happening. حَتَّى دَخَلَ عَلَىٰ عَائِشَةَ فَتَيَمَّمَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَىٰهِ He talked for the Prophet Sallam. And then he found him. وَهُوَ مَغْشِيٌ بِثَوْبٍ حَبَىٰ And the Prophet Sallam was lying there with his clothes covering him. فَكَشِفَ عَنْ وَجْهِهِ So Sayyidina Abu Bakr removed the clothing from the face of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ثُمَّ أَكَبَّ عَلَيْهِ فَقَبَّلَهُ وَبَكْحَ and then Sayyidina Abu Bakr, when he removed that cloth over his face, he came upon the Prophet and kissed him and he began to weep. And then he said, By my mother and my father, Wallahi la yazum Allah alayka mawtatayn. By Allah, Allah will not give you two deaths. Amun mawta alati alayka faqad muttaha. As for the death which is upon you, then you have died. Wa kharaja Abu Bakr fin nas. وَأُمَرْ يَتَكَلَّمْ فَقَالَ اَجْرِسْ يَا عُمَرْ وَهُوَ مَعْضٍ فِي كَلَامِهِ وَفِي ثَوْلَةِ غَضَبِهِ فَقَامَ أَبُو بَكْرٍ فِي النَّاسِ فَقِيبًا بَعْدَ عَنْ حَمِدَ اللَّهِ وَأَثْنَ عَلَيْهِ 
Sayyidina Abu Bakr and then he came into the masjid and he wanted to address the people and, Abu, and Umar was standing and he was speaking to the people and he was warning the people. So, the, so Sayyidina Abu Bakr said to him, sit down O Umar. <coughs> While Umar was still in his, in his anger and then Abu Bakr stood as a khatib amongst the people and he praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he said, Amma ba'd. فَإِنَّ مَنْ كَانَ يَعْبُدُ مُحَمَّدًا فَإِنَّ مُحَمَّدًا قَدْ مَاتْ وَمَنْ كَانَ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ حَيُّ لَا يَمُوتْ Then he said to the people, whoever used to worship Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then let him know that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has died. And whoever worships Allah, then let him know that Allah is ever living and he never dies. And then he recited this verse, from the Quran. وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلُ And Muhammad is not but a messenger. And indeed many messages have passed away before him. أَفَإِنْ مَاتَ أَوْ قُتِلٌ قَلَتْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَقَابِكُمْ If he were to die or to be killed, would you turn back upon your heels? وَمَنْ يَنْقَلِبْ عَلَىٰ أَقِبَيْهِ فَلَنْ يَضُرُّ اللَّهَ شَيْعًا And whoever amongst you turn back, turns back on his heels, then he will not harm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the least. And indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bestow a good, report, a good reward on those who are thankful. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr first, what did he do? He came to verify the news. And when he verified the news, then he saw the ummah in this problem. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him courage, shuja. And not just shuja, but also hujjah. But what did he do when he came and he spoke to the people? He came with knowledge. He didn't argue with emotion, but he came with his knowledge. So he said to the people the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concerning the death of the Prophet sallallahu And with that, even those who rejected this news accepted it. For Umar radiallahu says, For oh Wallahi, ma'in samaytu Abu Bakr tala تلاها فأقرت فأقرت حتى ما تقني رجلايا وحتى أهويت للأرض حتى سمعت تلاها وعلمت أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قد مات. He says that when I heard Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu recite this verse, I did my legs began to tremble and they would and I fell to the earth after I heard this verse being recited and I knew. That the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had died. Al Qurtabi narrates in his tafsir this ayah is a delil to show the bravery of Sayyidina Abu Bakr al his jura'ah, that when all of these things had befallen the Muslims, Allah made him steadfast. And there is no, there is no difficulties or calamities more worse or more difficult upon the believers than the death of their Nabi. So his, his bravery and his knowledge became apparent. And as a result of that, when he mentioned to the people these verses, whilst at this time Sayyidina Abu um, Umar but Allah was saying that the person was not die, and Osman became like a madman. And Ali radiallahu disappeared. The people didn't see him. And there was fawda and ittirab amongst the Muslims. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Sayyidina Abu Bakr the qudwa for this ummah. We can see the hikmah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam make Abu Bakr the one who would lead the prayer. And the time when the Prophet was not able to lead the prayer. Because of these qualities of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu. So the Ummah should recognize this quality of Sayyidina Abu Bakr when the whole of the Ummah was in disarray. Sayyidina Abu Bakr was steadfast. When they were lost and without knowledge, he gave them knowledge. And as a result of that, we should all recognize the mental of Sayyidina Abu Bakr for what he was to the Prophet وسلم, his companion, his Khalil. And indeed, as a result of that, then eventually the Muslims 
that you will say now Bakr as the Khalifa. Coming to some of the finer points concerning the washing of the Prophet when the companions decided that they will wash the Prophet they said ما ندري أن نجرده من ثيابه كما نجرد موتانا أو نغسله عليه ثيابه should we remove his clothes before we wash him or should we wash him in the same clothes that he's wearing so when they began to dispute amongst themselves as is narrated in some of the books of Sirah and in some of the books of Hadith that they fell upon them asleep to the extent that every man his beard was in his chest and they heard a man standing in the corner speaking to them saying to them that they should wash him with his kameez upon him and that they would pour the water upon him and then they would rub him but not with their hands with his kameez and this is how they washed the Prophet and Aisha narrates and said Muslim al Hakim she says, لَوْ اسْتَقْبَلْتُ مِنْ أَمْرِ مَا اسْتَقْبَلْتُ مَا بَسَلَهُ إِلَّا نِسَاءُ And had we been able to go back to that same instance again, then nobody would have washed the Prophet ﷺ except his wives. And then, the narrator, one of the narrators, uh, was narrated in some of the books of Sirah, then the Prophet ﷺ was, uh, takfeen was, his takfeen was done, and that was in three pieces of cloth, Yemeni cloth. And this cloth, there was no amama in it, no turban in it, nor was there any kameez in it. And then they prayed upon the Prophet As Ibn Abbas mentions, Mamata Rasulullah That they prayed upon the Prophet the men, they were enter, and they would pray and there would be no imam for them and then the women would enter and they would pray and there was no imam for them and then the children would enter and they would pray upon, upon the Prophet and there was no imam for them Ibn Kathir narrates in Bidayah al Nihaya wa hadha al-Sameeh in this particular action that, was ha- that happened huwa salatum alayhi furada lam yuamhum ahad and this prayer that they made for the Prophet in each one individually he says that there was no imam for them. Amrun mujmin alayhi la khilafa fi. This matter, there is no difference among the scholars concerning this matter. Then there became another issue that now we have washed him, where should we bury him? And so again, the Muslims, they differed. So some of them said, you'd follow in the member. Some of them said, we should bury him where his member is. And some others said, that we should bury him in Baqi. And others said that we should bury him where he prays. Fajaa Abu Bakr radiallahu. And then Abu Bakr radiallahu came. And what did he come with? He came with knowledge. SubhanAllah, knowledge and the importance of knowledge. SubhanAllah. How clear it becomes. When knowledge comes, khilaf is removed. But those people, they also accepted the knowledge. Sometimes you narrate to somebody an ayah or a hadith and they reject it because of the ignorance and because of the condition of the hearts. But the companions, what did they do? Say, Abu Bakr he said to them, ma nasitu ma sami'tu min Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul. He said, I didn't forget what I heard from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he said, "Ma ma qabad Allah nabiyan illa fi al-mawdi al-ladhi yajibu al-yudhal fi," that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala did not take the soul of any nabi except in a place that it was compulsory upon the people to bury him in that same place. So the companions buried the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the same place. And once there is some differing concerning the sahih of the hadith. But it seems to be that what is accepted by the people of Tariq and Sirah. Ibn Kathir, rahmatullah alayhi, 
narrates that it is mutawatir or this agreed upon consensus that the Prophet was buried in the Hujra of Aisha. And so was Abu Bakr and so was Umar. How was the grave of the Prophet in Islam? There are two types of graves. One is called a shak, which is a grave which is straight down. And one is lahab, which is down and then under the dirt, to the right or to the left. And the grave of the Prophet was lahab. It was down and then to the right. As is mentioned by a number of the companions, and uh, Imam al albani rahmatullahi says, يَجُوزُ فِي الْقَبْرِ اللَّحَدْ وَالشَّقْ لَجِرْيَانَ الْعَمْلُ فِيهِمَا فِي أَهْلِ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم He says, both of these types of graves are permissible. And then he goes on to explain that if the earth allows, if it is not like crumbly earth, it's soily earth which holds its form and shape, then the lahad is better. That a person should dig down and dig into the side, either to the right or to the left. And if the earth is not like that and it will crumble and fall, then it is better to build the grave straight down. <coughs> so the grave of the Prophet is dug down and to the right. And some of the relations mention that it was sealed with nine bricks. The grave of the Prophet was then sealed with nine bricks. And then after that came upon the Ummah many trials. Many trials descended upon the Ummah after the death of the Prophet And amongst the people who held to the burial of the Prophet who went into the grave of the Messenger of Allah was Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib and Al-Fadl ibn Abbas well, uh, al Qasim ibn Abbas and Sakran Mawla Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This was the slave of the Abbasman of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And some others also added, like Imam al Nawi also added, Al Abbas was amongst them. And also some of them said, Osama ibn Zayd and Aws ibn Khawli were also present. And they also lowered themselves in the grave when they buried the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When was the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam buried? We heard that the Prophet was buried on Monday, or was, sorry, died on Monday. But the Prophet wasn't buried until Wednesday. So the Prophet's actual burial happened two days later, in the night of the of Wednesday, the Prophet was buried. And of course, Allah's Messenger وسلم, when he was buried, and they dug his grave and buried him. They also bore in mind the statement of the Prophet Allah's curse upon the Jews and the Christians who took the graves of their prophets as Masajid. There's much that was said concerning the death of the Prophet concerning the Rasa, Rasa which is a tradition amongst the Arabs where people would say poems about the person who died. And there were many poems that were said, some of them were said, they were very eloquent poems. When a person reads them, he's driven to tears. From amongst the poems that were said, it was a poem by Hassan bin Thabit. But the poem is very long and time has already passed his by. Some of you, if you have the ability, inshallah, maybe you should go back to the books of Sira and read some of the poems which are said at the death of the Prophet, particularly the one by Hassan bin Thabit. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us a people when we hear the truth recognize it to be true and give us the ability to act upon it. And when we hear the falsehood recognize it to be false and give us the ability to avoid it. Wa aqulu ma islam. Bismillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah ma ba'an wa seek wa nafsi wa taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi al-sirri wa al-amu wa sallu wa sallim wa rashid al-nadheer. فإن الله سبحانه وتعالى قد أمر بذلك في كتابه فقال إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى علي مرة واحدة صلى الله عليه بها عشرة اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد 
اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وارض اللهم أربعة الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وأن سائر وعن سائر أصحاب نبيك أجمعين ونا أهل بيتك الطيبين الطاهرين وارض اللهم عنا ما هم من منك وكرمك وجودك يا رحم الراحمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الشرك والمشركين ودمن الأعداء الدين وحمي حوزة الإسلام يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء من الأموات عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذبكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكروا الله الذين عليه علي الذين يذكركم وادعوه يستجيب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقيموا الصلاة